Hello, silly people, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Trey, and for the summer, we are now on summer hours. And because of the summer hours, I think about a summer study time. Summer study time where I hope to do just a whole slew of human anatomy, gesture work, all of that. So here's the tentative schedule for the summertime. We have the 18th. We're going to do the, the artist boot camp redux. And then after that, we'll go into the Voltron method, which is we will break down each the human figure piece by piece. So on the 25th, we'll do the torso, the ribs, muscles of the, the torso, then do the shoulder, upper arm bones and muscle work forearm same bones muscle work hands hips upper leg knees lower leg feet and then head for the end and that's why i call it voltron because you know and i'll form the head and whatnot so that is tentative tentative blah 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 that is tentatively what my summer study program will be. And so let's get this started with Artist Bootcamp Redux. So once again, for the first time, create a new layer, hit the B for the brush tool, pick a color, we'll pick, I will keep picking orange because again, we're summer. We got the summertime in us right now. So back to it. Where we're trying to, we're not going for perfection. We're trying to do our dailies, our habits to keep our drawing strong. Yeah. Not too slow, not too fast, but you keep. Basic shapes are the building blocks for everything in the real world. So, the rectangles. Rectangles are great for building shapes, like actual building buildings. So for example, this would have windows. And so it looks like a building. You'd have the, the first floor door. You got some pillars. Anyways, we'll keep it going, keep it going. And the best part about, this is jazz practice. This is what we do, 2D shapes to 3D shapes. And again, we'll make a new layer. So now we have the cubes, cylinders, cones, Pyramids and spheres. We're keeping it, We're trying to keep our get ourselves loose, get warmed up, warm 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 ups. Trying to get our hands, our not minds, into the game. Our artists are just like athletes, right? Just like, <laughs> just like athletes. That was terrible. Something about doing this top part of the cylinder. It always makes it.
Okay. And a 3D shape. So you can't see the bottom part, right? So that would be... If you could see through it. Pyramid. So, so... This isn't... This is without, you know... Uh, mechanical interference. Because mechanically you can do this easy. You know, you just touch this, touch, touch, touch. If you wanted to make a triangle just with straight edges, you know, you could just do that. And we have the sphere. Spheres cast shadows. And the light is coming from here. So there would be a highlight. And then the rest would be shadow. Right. And that's what makes up a sphere. And that is the basic shapes. And we're moving on. The underlying structure of every head is the skull. This is the skull Horatio. And I have broken down the measurements. If you would like to draw said head, right? There's this big circle for the cranium. So for the cranium, divided in half. And then you have the hairline would be up here, here. The brow line here, here, where your eyes, well, eyebrows would be, your eye line, here, here, right? and you can see that the orbital bone, right? There's a cavity where your eyeball sits and it moves all around to see your environment, but it's encased in the eye socket. So we have the nose cavity, nose cavity, and just below that is the nose line. Nose line. So if you divide it up from the eye line, nose line, nose line, chin line, and between that is the mouth line. And the mouth line has where your teeth. And then the mandible, attaches your jaw, your lower jaw, to your cranium, which is this large dome. So if we were to draw that very quickly, let's, you got the big old circle, badly drawn, but you, can, you get what I'm saying. You can do better than that. You can do better. The mandible coming down from that. Mandible, right, comes down. Into like this, making a sort of egg shape. Divide that in half. Got the hairline, eyebrow ridge, the eye line the nose line, and the mouth line. And that's the basics of the head. So again, we have the front view, but let's look at this view. A three quarters turn off screen, screen right. So let's draw that. Three quarters, you can really see the cranium here. Let's look at all that. That approximated circle is what houses your brain. And of course, I like to do the side plane and you see this highlight, right? I'm following this highlight as an indicator, but it goes down around the orbital and the cheek 
going down towards your chin. The mandible. The mandible. Right, coming off that cranium. Here it's there's a, a spring that you can move the jaw, but it would be controlled by muscles, powerful muscles that help you chew and talk. So, of course, we have the hairline. This curves in space. All right, this is like the cylinder. We have the eyebrow ridge. It curves in space again. We can't see, but there would be a. There's the eye line. Again, curving in space. The nose line at the bottom of the nose. In space, the mouth line. But also notice, let's erase. Because right. there that, that out, it comes out, then comes in and comes out again and around the cheek. That's a key indicator of the skull, that out, in, out motion. All right. And your nose is cartilage, but it could be your nostrils. eye socket where your eyeball would be. Your eyeball. Brace some of this back because you wouldn't see it. <laughs> That's a rough approximation of your skull, your lips. Uh, you could smile. Or maybe you don't smile. But it, it opens and closes so you can put food in, you can speak. And that is the skull. Now let's go for those hands. Hands, hands, hands. So let's take a look at what, what hands we've got. Looking for something interesting. That's not bad. This. Curling. Palm. There we go. We'll try to draw this one. I don't think I've done this one before. So. V and five for a fifty percent opacity. Go B, hit the B for the brush tool. Make a new layer. So I'm not drawing on this layer. So we try to look for under underlying structure. Underlying structure is right somewhat of a box. Modified, but. box in space so right this is we have the top of the box the side a side we can't see and this is the front and also the bottom part we can't see or this back part but we try to see through things as an artist so here's the basic box and then we have the fingers radiating off of this box. So let's draw these fingers. We've got Of 
course we can do better but we can we're just trying to get the basic structure the thumb can't forget the thumb and that is the hand we can clean it up and whatnot but we got the the basics of it so let's move on to anatomy so now we have our anatomy study and our mannequin mannequin again is a great way to study if we replace this puppet form of a, a proto-human with the muscles so let's go over the muscles we have the trapezius going along the backside. It looks like a diamond. It's like, eh, eh, eh. Mm, mm, mm. And neck, shoulder, but mostly that back part. The deltoid, or shoulder. You have the pectoralis, which is your pecs. This large, flat, strong muscle of your chest. Tricep on the back. Brachialis on the side, this green one, and the bicep, purple in the front. So back to front, tricep, brachialis, bicep. Back to front, I mean front to back, bicep, brachialis, tricep on the back. We have the brachioradialis, that is the lower part of the humerus, comes down and inside towards the wrist. Brachioradialis. We have the external obliques, which are on the side. Right. External obliques. We have the rectus abdominis, which is the muscles of your stomach. Your upper and lower. Upper, right, just underneath your pectoralis, towards your belly button and then the lower from the belly button down to the groin area, rectus abdominis. We have extensors and flexors of your forearm that helps you move your fingers. And the, there's a lot of muscles in your forearm that helps you deal with the, the range of motions of your hands and fingers, extensors and flexors. Moving towards the legs, we have the gracilis, which is the inside of your thigh. Inside of the thigh, adductor longus, underneath the gracilis, going towards the outside, right? Outside of your thigh, adductor longus. The rectus femoris, right? There's a rectus abdominis and a rectus femoris. It's the front side of your thigh, right, going down towards your kneecap, rectus femoris. The sartorius, from the inside of your thigh towards the hip, on the outside. So outside into, towards the in, or in towards the out. We have the vastus lateralis, which is the outside of your thigh. We have the gastrocnemius, the calf muscle on the inside of your lower leg, inside of the lower leg. The anterior tibialis from the knee, outside of the knee down, this middle, you have the patellar tendon, going from the kneecap downwards. Patellar tendon, your patella is your kneecap. Down, fibularis longus, also called the peroneus. Peroneus, on the outside of your lower leg. The extensor digitorum longus is between the fibularis longus and the anterior tibialis. And the tibia is this bone. 
the tib fib tib fib so anterior tibialis the tibia and the fibula tib fib it's in the names tibialis fibularis tib fib and that are the muscles of the body so let's map that to this mannequin right here new layer go back to the b for the brush tool now at, for the head the head is looking off not looking directly at us but it's looking off to his right side so we can map this out like we've done before the large cranium there's an edge line to the face there's a center line there's a side plane line that wraps down and goes towards the chin the mandible comes down and around and leaves the hairline not at the top but near the top the eyebrow ridge eye line nose line and mouth line now let's map these muscles so we have the trapezius neck and shoulder we have the deltoid we have the bicep on the inside we have the brachialis and then the tricep on the back so bicep brachialis tricep is the front to back back to the front is tricep brachialis and bicep we have the pectoralis here's the sternum the sternum and it attaches and goes along the rib cage and goes into your humerus which is the bone on your upper but we'll go over this and the upper arm portion of summer study the clavicle is here pectoralis deltoid tricep brachialis bicep you have the radiant brachioradialis coming from the outside towards the inner wrist outside towards the inner wrist outside towards the inner wrist you go you have the extensors and flexors of the forearm that help you move your your fingers and your hand very important external obliques a latissimus dorsi is about here right, but the external obliques love handles baby love handles we have the rectus abdominis just underneath the pectoralis and right at the belly button we have the what some would call the six pack. As you get older, you just get less and less packs. It becomes, you know, a four pack, then a two pack, and then there's, there's a no pack. And then the lower, from the belly button down, belly button down to the groin. And we have the gracilis this in, inner thigh muscle, the gracilis, the adductor longus, going towards the outside of the thigh, from the groin, outside, we have the rectus femoris, 
which is front and center. Rectus femoris of your thigh. You have the vastus lateralis, which isn't exactly on the side, but it's enough on the side of the thigh. We have the patella, which is your kneecap. The patellar tendon comes down towards your ankles from the kneecap. Gastrocnemius, the calf muscle. Calf muscle. We have the fibularis longus or the peroneus on the outside of the lower leg. Next to the tibula, right? The tibula is one of the standing lower, lower leg bones. There's the tib and the fib, right? The tibula is the, the fatter one going towards your ankle and the fibula is a support. It's more of a support, support beam bone but again, we'll go over that during our lower leg studies for summer study. So we have the anterior tibialis outside, outside of the tibula. Extensor digitorum longus is between the anterior tibialis and the fibularis longus. And that are the basic muscles. There's a lot more muscles, but we just did the most basic, well not most basic, but basic basic form of the muscles of your skeleton, the human skeleton. All right, so next, now let's do a, a basic box form for this mannequin. So we make a new layer, B for the brush tool. And so circle for the head, side plane, the bottom mandible, All right? The ear would be between the eye line and the nose line. So somewhere around here, we have a center line, a side plane coming around the, the orbital bone, the eye socket and all that, the cheek and coming down towards the chin and the neck. We're going to do the limbs and all of that mostly as cylinders and circles for the joints. So circle joint. Circle joint, circle joint, circle joint, circle joint for the wrists, circles for the knees, circles for the ankles. We're going to make the, let's see, should it be the box or the egg? How about we do both? So we have a boxy form at the will be a rib cage. The sternum would be about here. Clavicle, clavicle. And we'll have a side, a slight side plane. Because I think this side is seen more than this side. Just to give it dimensionality. So you can see if light is coming here. This is lit, lit, not so lit. Okay, and now let's do some cylinders for the arms and legs. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting our reps in on limbs of the figure. The hips, also a box. There's a slight hip tilt because this is the dominant leg. Dominant leg is key. So this is up. This is slightly down. Again, a slight side plane. And 
Here's the box. And again, cylinders for the, the thighs. Cylinders. And cylinders for the lower legs. And that is well, the feed, of course. These are just simplified feet for the mannequin. Hands, of course. Hands. All right, let's turn that. And this is the form in a simple box shapes. There you go. Now, with this statue of Hephaestus or Vulcan, let's make a simple box, well, simple three dimensional shapes for this statue. So new layer, B for the brush tool. And again, let's circle for the cranium. It's usually how I start. He's looking off slightly to his right. So center line, a slight side plane. So going down, once it gets to the, the eyebrow ridge, it goes back and around the, eye, the orbital bone, cheekbone, and down towards the chin. So we have the mandible, mandible, the eye line, nose line, mouth line and the hairline. Now for the body, let's... I think I forgot to do the, <laughs> the circle for the last, for the mannequin. So let's do the box form. We're looking more on his, his left side. So let's demonstrate that in this box form. So again, if the light's coming this way, this would be lit, this would be lit, less so on this side, the shadow side and the back side. So if we wanted to do an egg shape, let's do that. Because there's two ways to do things. Actually, there's many ways to do things, but we're making it simple on ourselves, this sternum. Clavicle, clavicle. But let's do the deltoid as circles. Circles for joints. Circle for the joints. Circle for the knees. Circles for the ankles. And we make cylinders to connect the circles, those joints from these rigid forms that we indicate with cylinders. Cylinders, cylinders. And let's make the box form for the hips. Again, we see this side plane. Right, so if we can see through it, try to see through things as an artist. Basic, say, basic shape, top, sides. Right, again, light. This would be lit. This would be lit. Not so much on the shadow side. And from the box. We do cylinders for the, the thighs or the upper leg, right? If you wanna 
They call this the rubber banding or banding just to indicate that if there's a form in space. Form in space. Right, form in space. In space. And for the lower leg, cylinder, cylinders. Again, forms in space. And the feet, more complex than the mannequin feet, but we keep it simple. We keep it simple. And we top that. Oh, let's do that hand. Hands. Hands. And now, this is Hephaestus, or Vulcan, the Smith God. And we will map some muscles. B for the brush tool. Again, let's take a look at this cranium for Hephaestus. The cranium uh, circle mandible comes down. We have the center line. He's looking slightly off, down, and off. We have the side play line going around the orbital bone and down towards the chin. We have the hairline, which would be somewhere around here. Didn't make the cranium big enough, but I can always fix that. We have the eyebrow ridge. We have the eye line just below that. We have the nose line. We have the mouth line. We have the trapezius, which are shoulder back muscles. Which it goes like this. It covers the back. But we have the pectoralis. Well, here's the sternum, the clavicle bones which help in our movement. So clavicle, sternum, pectoralis borders those two. Goes along the rib cage. Sternum, rib cage, into the humerus. The deltoid, which is the shoulder muscles. We have the bicep on the front. We have the brachialis on the side. Can't see it from here. And the tricep on the back. Can't quite see it here, but it will be on along the back. We have the brachial radialis, which goes from the outside towards the inner inner wrist. Outside. Outside towards the inner wrist. Outside towards the inner wrist. Brachialis. Brachial radialis. Extensors and flexors of your forearm to help you move your hands and fingers. We have the External obliques, the latissimus, latissimus dorsi, would be upper rib cage, well, lower rib cage, lower rib cage, the external obliques, external obliques. Uh, we have the rectus abdominis, just below the pector, 
pectoral muscles and right around the belly button, belly button. There's your six pack or two pack, whatever you have at the moment or no pack, I don't know. Uh, lower rectus abdominis is below the belly button. The gracilis, the inner calf, gracilis. And some of these you can't see because of his tunic, but we see through the figures, through, as an artist, you'll see through things to see the underlying structure. So gracilis, we have the adductor longus from the inside thigh to the outside, inside to the outside. We have the rectus femoris along the femur. Right? The femur is your thigh bone. The femur, rectus femoris. Rectus femoris. Fastus lateralis is on the side. Vastus letter list. Patella is the kneecap. We have the patellar tendon going towards the ankle. Patellar tendon, patellar tendon. Anterior tibialis on the outside next to the tibula. There's the tib fib. Tib fib. Tib is the, a wider bone. The fibula is a smaller bone and it supports and it's the outside. So tip fib, tip fib. This is how I remember things. Yeah. Uh, we have the fib fibularis longus. Fibularis longus, also known as the peroneus. Peroneus on the outside. We have the gastrocnemius on the inside, of your, which is your calf muscle. Calf muscle. Gastrocnemius. We have the extensor digitorum longus between the anterior tibialis and the fibularis longus. It's right here, this red one. Right here. And that are the simple muscles of Hephaestus, the Smith God. He has a signature hammer and he's making tools for war and whatnot. Thank you, Hephaestus. This last section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some gesture images. And gesture is just to get a feel of human beings in motion. So I'm on a site called Unsplash, unsplash.com, and it is where you can get royalty-free images. Now, sometimes for royalty-free, you have to look for images that you know you like, but I like this one. Right? And you can download these images free. For your study practice, you can study from whatever images you like, but because this is a demonstration, you know, I like to go to the royalty-free route. Now to wrap up this art boot camp redux, we're gonna do some gesture drawings. Now here is a page of gestures, and gestures are just quick sketches to get a feel of the body and what it's doing. Sometimes you can do it simply, like as a stick figure, and sometimes you get more developed works. But let's see, I have three images. This one is a pose. I like this pose. So we're going to do that. And then a running pose, running gesture, and the skate one. I really like this one. I like mid-action shots. So let's get to it. 
We'll start with the pose shot. B for the brush tool. And really you just want to get the idea of what's going on. So I usually start with the head just as a placement of something, just to get something down on. And then I see an overall swoop and then blam. Right, so swoosh, bam. That's what, that's how I feel. It's like swoosh, bam. And then there's also this, this leg. So this is the dominant leg. She's putting all of her, well, most of her weight on this leg. And then her shoulders are like this. Her hips are like this. So there's this slight tilt. Rib cage. And her hips, hips. Hips are a box, right? So if you make the box like that, her arm, we have the ball for the deltoid. You can have a cylinder for the arm positioning, another cylinder for the elbow joint, and it comes up. And then her hand, but we can't quite see it. But her head, again, the cranium. There's that. The mandible. She's got the neck. Eye, eye line. Well, let's do this. Center line. We have the hairline at the top, eyebrow ridge, eye line, nose line, mouth line. And again, this is the simple form, which is doing blocks or simple, simple and complex shapes. This is our dominant leg. We have the kneecap. I'd say it's around here. It comes down. Gastrocnemius. And we have feet. And the foot is usually, for me, three parts. There's the heel part. There's the middle part. And then there's the ball of the foot with the toes. So let's continue. Again. And that is pretty much the pose. This is the gesture, the gesture drawing for this pose. Nothing too crazy, nothing but you got, you know, the action and what is going on. Let's try another one. Usually start with the head. Head shape. Or the cranium. And she is in running motion. So her body, I feel this. Right, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. And then there's a, this leg. But I think I might dramatize this leg to be straighter because it would be a curve, straight, curve, straight. There's a lot of curves, curves, right? But let's start with her shoulders. Slight tilt, slight. We've got that swoosh. There's a rib cage. And then the hips. Okay. 
Can I like to make a box? And so that her far leg, her right leg is a swoosh. And gestures aren't meant to be too precious. You're just trying to get the essentials down. But this leg, this leg, I think I want more of a straight. Right? So I'm breaking from what I actually see just for drama. And it doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. You're just trying to get the idea down. So if I can, I'm pushing drama here. This is not what she's actually doing, but this is what, you know. Sometimes for emphasis, emphasis, I put more drama into the figure. So maybe she's like that. Right? This is not what she's actually doing. But this is what I imagine in my mind her doing. And only you can decide if it's right or wrong to embellish, to embellish what you see. But this reads just a little bit more. Right? And as a viewer, a great, for me, a great gesture is, can it be read nearly instantly? Like, what is the person doing? I think they're jogging or running. You could even press it even further. So say, for example, I'm just going to do the, a small little brief over here. So that's a, this is much more dramatic than this pose here. I'm pushing it another degree. You know what I mean? Just, and this is a, another, another gesture. This is. And that's just, these are all, this is, these two are just gestures. I just push this one a little bit further than this, just for dramatic emphasis. And sometimes it helps because then, like in my mind, I can see a person running in this gesture. And I've drawn enough that I can, re I've recorded in my mind the body position arm position, basic flow of a subject to help that I can then manipulate it into a run. And that's why we do gestures, so that we can learn basic flow, basic body positioning. What does a person look like when they, they're jogging? And then how do you press 
push that further. Now let's do the last one. So for this one, I'm going to go super fast. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just be what I think I see. Man's got some good control. And this is also a gesture. This is just the basic information of here. This would still count as a gesture. It's just, you know, the essence of the character, the essence of the subject. And of course, you can continue to help refine it. But usually we go from simple to complex, simple to complex. We have the shoulders, we have the rib cage. Right, the sternum for that center line, right? I feel whoosh, 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 whoosh. So swoosh, 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 swoosh. Sometimes it's a feeling more than anything scientific. It's like, do you see that? I can feel more of it like this. Right. Cylinders for arms, circles for joints. Right. We got the extensors and flexors. His arms are slightly, well, his arms are out, fingers kind of pointed. Looks like he's trying to take flight, but he's trying to keep his balance while he's focusing the human body is amazing at what we are able to do not just with our physical bodies but with other things like bikes like the tricks that i've seen on bikes amazing the tricks i've seen on skateboards motorbikes The human being and the hot human body is amazing with what we can come up with. Okay. So now we have the hips. Looks like it's this. You can see just a little bit of the side plane. It looks like it's sloping to one side. And his, his hip would go here, the upper part to the kneecap, kneecap, tib, fib, and the foot. Right, so the hip comes up this way to the kneecap. And then with the thigh, but comes down from that kneecap to his ankle, ankle, the foot, we can see part of the foot or well, the shoe and the shoe, right? So his foot is here, but it's foreshortened because it's coming at us. This part is nearer to us than this part And then we have the board. But I wanted to get the, the physical body down before I put the board in. We have this foot. 
just barely see as he controls this thing. Patella, thigh, gastrocnemius. Wheel. Oh, the wheel is somewhere here. Right. He's got it. And that is the gesture. And that is the gesture, which is again just to get an idea of form. It's loose. It's not def refined or defined, but it's enough to get an idea of what is going on quickly. You can always, once you have a basic rough outline, which is what I would call this, you can then go in and then sharpen it, define it, get better with the exact positioning the, clo the clothing that he's wearing, right? Even the lighting and light sources. But first you need something to work off of and that's what a gesture can provide. Something to work off of. All right, so. That was Artist Boot Camp, the Redux. That bright white can sometimes hurt your eyes after ex prolonged exposure. So I put it gray just to soften that. So that was the Boot Camp Redux, just to sharpen our skills a little bit. Next week, we shall go over the torso, where we will break down the, the rib cage, some of the spine, uh, and go over the muscles of the torso. So I will see you in the next video. Take care and keep shining.